Good morning, and I'm Teresa Murtha with the Panagorda History Center, and I want to welcome you to today's episode. That's Bob Carpenter's talk on the early history of Fisherman's Village. Would you be interested in a place called Punta Gorda? And the old answer, Punta Gorda, what? Where? Where's Punta Gorda? So I looked it up. So we got, we did. We decided to come here, stayed with our in-laws in Clearwater, got here. And uh, when Kay and I came down here, the site was something else. We'd come across the bridge, made a right, and came down here. And I was on Marion. Mattresses lay along the street, garbage can. It was just an incredible, and we just looked at it and said, what the hell did we get ourselves into? <laughs> we went out to the job site, and then over to see Don Donaldson at Emerald Point. Don said I was his 31st interview on the job of running the place. And I had books on many, the mall, how to water things, valves, fire, everything you can think of, and one on promotion, because I was also the promotion director of the Maui Mall, which right across the street from the Kahului Harbor, where all the cruise ships come in now because the Haina was terrible, terrible, was destroyed. That was not our home, we were on the other side, but we were there every weekend. So uh, that's kind of it, and we started from here. Um, one Street Docks is what some of the old timers would know. It's what it was originally called. And they had a railroad line that run a track that ran down through in boxcars. There were so many fish in this harbor. They were boxcarring them out of here up to north. I guess they got the ice from the ice house and two or three things. That's the part of history I've only read about through, <laughs> through some of these things here. And uh, uh, the first, uh, the, uh, Henderson's fish, Hendrickson's fish house, and then uh, Gulf Oil, the three oil tanks that were, were the, well, it was the village square that we built, and right in front of the oyster bar and all that job area. And there were three giant tanks above ground. I can talk about those. And there were boat repairs, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, in the mid-70s, uh, Don Donaldson got his two buddies together. One of them was the famed radio announcer, Earl Nightingale. He was on about 1,500 radio stations around the world mm -hmm. as a philosopher. He was like the Paul Hervey, only he did philosophy. Wonderful man. Then Don also got a guy named Bob Elliott. And Bob Elliott was the one that had brought the Toyota dealerships across from McDonald's behind that uh, granite and whatever. You can still see it. It's a showroom. It's some of the businesses in there. And they owned half of the 50% of the project or of the village. And New West, N-U-W-E-S-T, in Canada, is the one at that time, they were the third largest company in Canada. They got gold mines, oil, shopping centers, they were big ones, shopping centers. Well, Donaldson hooked up with them, so they owned the other 50%. Here in Florida, the headquarters was in Fort Lauderdale, where I went back and forth before they built the interstate on that two-lane mess, you know, getting over there uh, for years. And then they built the, um, the, the interstate. Uh, it was a proposal to uh, put a shopping center on the old fish docks. And the first rendering that was turned into city council kind of bombed, uh, but the way it was going to be was the stores would be, uh, the front of the stores would be looking out east and west and parking along the side. It was kind of a, a strange thing. Uh, from what you see uh, down there today. And uh, there was a lot of pressure on the Punta Gorda Council. It was, uh, this was a big NIMBY town. You're familiar with that, Ed? Not in my backyard. And the Isles were the biggest protesters of this. <laughs> and they just, no, we don't want this. And so the council bowed to it and turned them down. After that, now this is all in a nutshell, and this man here, since he had the, the, the old part of a fish house in there, what uh, year would that have been? Oh, that was, uh, well, 79 is when uh, when everything kind of started. Uh, well, it was actually 78. So 79, the Army Corps of Engineers got involved in this, the whole project. We didn't own it. Remember, the city owns it and still owns it down there. We leased it. The Army Corps of Engineers came in and said there was, a, everything was talking in the 70s of environment. Well, you can imagine what their thoughts were when the three big oil tanks above ground and one big hurricane and with the waters, that if they tickled over or topped over or whatever, you know, that was one of the reasons in here. Uh, 
So they went to the council and said, either put in the, a new seawall around this place or shut it down, lock it up, get rid of everything. Um, Gulf oil was a disaster kind of waiting to, to happen. The city then, uh, with hat in hand, went back to Donaldson and the group and said, are you still interested? Yeah, they were interested. But they had a new drawing. And that drawing is what you see now. Um, the uh, new design was, everything was, I'm gonna say, railroad pushed through, uh, turned backs. There was issues, you know, that happened there. And I, I don't know all of them because I came in a little bit later, but things happened and didn't happen that shouldn't have happened. And that's in construction and all these other things. And I'll, we'll get into that later. PGI, as I mentioned, was the biggest protesters. Uh, and uh, the city, again, had no money to put in a multi-million dollar seawall, a million something. So they accepted the deal. It was fast-tracked, as I mentioned, the, the original lease. Uh, I wrote a check for, it was $500 a month to lease that whole property. And the city kind of had to go back to them a couple times, councils down the road. And they said, why, oh, no, that's too cheap. What happened here? And they, what had happened on it, the company, uh, New West, etc., said, we, um, we'll give you 500 a month in lieu of the we will pay for 100% of all the improvements to the marina, the dredging, and the, uh, uh, the, the new sea, uh, sea wall, uh, riprap and all that stuff that goes around it. And the city said, okay. There was a, a, each year there was like the cost of living was added to it, but that's insignificant. You look at $500 a day, that gets you what? One third of a house rental? <laughs> you know? uh, I don't know what it is now. It was a 40 year lease and to uh, option to renew. And they were always haggling on this thing, but the lease was a lease, you know? City tried to get out of it and they couldn't, they were stuck with it. Well, since I left and all kinds of things have changed in there. Uh, they we're putting in the first pilot and it was down on the very tip where Harpoon Harry's is now. It wasn't here then, it was even that, not even the first part of it. And right as they put that thing in, there was, you know, this artesian well down here in Punta Gorda, mm -hmm. on the right thing there? Mm -hmm. And then they said it was radioactive and thought it was gonna sterilize the whole community. <laughs> well, anyway, there was one down at the tip of the river, the old pier, the old docks. And it was flowing water like you wouldn't believe. And people, oh, they didn't get down there and you know scoop it out. It was just there and just running out into the thing. And that was where, uh, once they did this uh, by putting that you know, those concrete things and pounding them down, they fractured the water leak coming in. And we had a plan there. We were it was already designed and approved. Was putting in underneath the driveway a huge concrete. Uh, well, a cistern and put it in there and then recycle the water back to the irrigation. Great idea. Until they started pounding. <laughs> and we had to come in, they brought in like three or four cement trucks to pour down that hole to plug it up. So now it just goes laterally and doesn't go anywhere. But that was kind of a shame, you know, because I was really looking forward. That's a unique feature. All right. Uh, so then, as doing marketing and everything else, Don, Mr. Donaldson asked me to do what I call a dog and pony show. And that's uh, go to the Rotary Clubs, the PGI, you name it, all over the county with my slide projector. And you remember what those were? You know, they weren't yeah, right. So I'd take pictures of the construction today and then take the picture of the plans and put them on there and explain it everything. A lot of people were interested, but the, not the majority. The group of the vocals, you know, would boo me or hiss me or do whatever thing. And that just went on all the time. I just got used to it. You know. um, we held our grand opening on February of 1980. And uh, I was up on the podium in the front, you know, where you first come in, they got the lights going down that little tunnel in there. You know, where there's a ice cream or some kind of shop there. So I was doing that and introducing guests and all those things. And here was the protesters with the little little signs, you know, and everything else. They're like, give it up. <laughs> and there was a change of heart on this later. Um, we had, at that time, was 46 timeshares. 
And that was the worst thing when I took over to after years later, try and get the misconceptions, the lies that those salesmen did down there. And all of them that came back, you know, year after year, say, what the, what, what? the love boat was going to dock here. Oh, that was a good one. The sandy beach next door. Well, they finally put that thing in. But the thing is, if you know anything about the water, when we have low tide, you can walk out and it's barely over your ankles, you know? <laughs> so uh, everything that they embellished in there, I had to make excuses, not excuses. I would just say, I'm going to tell you, they lied to you. And I never had one person say anything negative from that point. They'd say, at least someone told us that it was wrong, you know, what had happened on it. Well, now it's a hotel. Those leases, a lot of people don't read the fine print, or they just forgot to tell them when they the sale came out. It was only 40 years, and it reverts back to the owner. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe some of you had timeshare there. Uh, we had the 98 Slip Marina, 40 shops, six restaurants, and uh, Nightingale's was on the upstairs. That's the captain's table now. And the other big store was in the center of the mall. Now it's built up, but we had a, the, uh, the village square. There was a big water fountain inside there. And that's where we had our promotions on it just about every weekend. Debbie Chafin opened up the Oyster Bar. She and her husband, she used to own the, um, the Riviera. And then they got divorced and split up, and she signed the lease to put one in here just to get even with her husband. <laughs> Long story there, but she was a, one of the finest restauranters I have ever known. Still alive. Yeah, she's, she's still there. She sends me a Christmas card every year. And when, uh, even after I left, I still, she gave me a $50 gift certificate to tell me. <laughs> Just little things, but that's local stuff to do. Uh, then on the very, uh, on the opposite side of the fish market, down on the very end, next to where the shrimp boats were, was the original village fish market. It had nothing to do with the Danuno family. It was a family from across the river, and I, it was somewhere off Harbor Boulevard, Harbor View. They sold fish. Do you know, remember that place or anything about it? Um, yes and no. Oh, well, <laughs> I will tell you what, but from here. They had babies. There was nothing wrong with that. But the health department came in, and they came up to see me in there and said they just gave a notice of, of violations of this place. And one of them was changing the baby on the counter where they cut fish. <laughs> and it went on, and they, oh, I just, wanted, I just couldn't believe it. And then they quit paying rent. So finally, I had to lock them out. Mean old manager here, you know. Um, and Chris Danuno and his parents came into the picture and said uh, that they wanted it, so I leased it to them. And it went over so well that he leased second space. And then he leased the third space. And then over years, he leased the fourth space. So he had the whole thing. And then he sold it to these new people. Uh, and they've left. And, and uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Leroy's, I guess, is coming into that uh, space in there. I just can't see an empty space. It just hurts me. <laughs> you know, That'll be a good choice, a good choice there. Oh, and the Greek restaurant was on that very corner. Mike and uh, had a, a, a boating business. Remember the old St. Petersburg Pier? Well, the city owned it, and they shut it down. Oh, it, it was an inverted pyramid, a triangle. The top floor was Playboy Club. I think it was something else. So I went up there because they were closing it down, and all the merchants were bailing. I got Mike to come down and look at it, and his wife was with him. She opened up two dress stores. Mike opened up the restaurant, and you know the rest was history. It's just kind of like kind of multiplying on it. Here, the very end space on the bottom was called Scooby's Ice Cream. <clears throat> um, the space where Harpoon Harry's is now, on the, the three spaces going west, um, just sat there for years. So I had an idea of it, and we called it, <clears throat> do you have any water or anything? Oh, yeah. oh sorry, do you want to get We called this thing the Village Artisans, since I was big on marketing and things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we got uh, uh, talking to, we had... Uh, Place, uh, shows in the mall with uh, local artisans. So I talked to them and everything else. I said, would you be interested if we build a space here and didn't charge you anything just to fill it up, would you go in there 
and put a tag on it. We have one cash register. That was the idea. Fisher and Mildy got 15%. Stay tuned to be continued.